Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In the previous video, we saw how we can use guides in Photoshop Elements. In this video, I want to show you how you can use rulers in Photoshop Elements to measure distances and sizes, and how you can use rulers along with guides to space things out evenly. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video, but it'll work the same with other versions. The first thing I'm going to do is make the rulers visible by going up to the View menu and choosing Rulers. Notice that there's a keyboard shortcut for showing rulers. It's Shift-Command-R on a Mac, or it would be Shift-Control-R on a PC. Notice that the zero point on the two rulers are right at the top left corner of my document. I'll place a couple of guidelines, one at the top and one at the left side of my document. And now if you follow those guidelines out towards the rulers, you can see that they're both lined up to zero. And if I place a guide along the right edge of my document and another one along the bottom edge, you can follow those rulers out and you can see that the size of my document is 6 inches wide by 8 inches high. So by default, the zero point is in the top left corner of your document, but you can move the zero point. Let's say I want to measure the size of the squares in my image. Now I know that all six of them are the same size, so it doesn't matter which one I measure, but let's measure the red square. I'm going to put my cursor in the upper left corner of my work area window where the two rulers meet. Now I'll click and continue holding down my mouse button as I drag over to the top left corner of my red square. Then I'll release the mouse button, and if you look at the rulers, you'll notice that the zero point is no longer at the top left of the document. I'm going to go to each ruler and pull out a new guideline and place one at the top and one at the left side of the red square. Now if you follow those guidelines out to the rulers, you can see that the zero point is in fact at the top left corner of the red square. So now to measure the square, I'll just place another guide on the other two sides of it, one at the bottom, and one along the right edge. And follow those new guides out to the rulers, we see that the square measures two inches. It's starting to look pretty busy with all these new guides, so let's get rid of them. To do that, go up to the View menu and choose Clear Guides. Let's go back to the View menu and look at some other options in there. Notice at the bottom there's a choice to add a new guide, so I'll click on that and the New Guide dialog box opens. You can choose to add a horizontal or vertical guide, and you can also enter a position on your document that you want the new guide to be in. I'll leave this at its default settings and click OK. And it adds a vertical guide at the very left edge of our document. I personally always pull them out from the rulers because that's how I learned how to do it. Let's actually reset our zero point back to its default. To do that, just double click on the upper left corner of the rulers. Now our zero points are back to the upper left of our document. Let's use the rulers and guides to arrange these six color squares. First, I'm going to place them one half inch in from the edge of my document on all four sides. So I want to move that guide that we added earlier to the half inch mark on the ruler. Remember, to move a guide, you need to use the Move tool. So I'll click on it in the toolbox to make it active. Then I'll place my mouse over the guide, and when the cursor changes to two lines with a double-headed arrow on either side, I know that I can click and drag to move the guide and I'll move it to the half inch mark on the ruler. Then I'll let go of the mouse button. Now I'll go over to the ruler on the left and click and drag out another guide and place it at the five and a half inch mark so that it's a half inch in from the right side of my document. Next I'll drag two more guides from the top ruler and place them a half inch in from the top and bottom of my document. I'm going to use the Move tool to place one color square a half inch in from each of the four corners. Notice over in the Layers panel that I have each square on a separate layer. That will allow me to move them individually. 
First I'll click on the red square and see I get a bounding box around it with eight handles which allow me to resize or rotate the item. Well, I don't want to do any of that, I just want to move it. That bounding box is an option of the Move tool. I find it distracting in this case, and since I don't need it, I can disable it in the Tool options for the Move tool. It's this box right here that's labeled Show Bounding Box. When I click on it, the check mark goes away, indicating that it's no longer active. And the bounding box disappears from around the red square. I'll leave the other two boxes checked. Show Highlight on Rollover will highlight the contents of the layer of the item you hover your mouse over. So if I put my mouse over part of the magenta square, it shows a blue border around the whole magenta square, even though parts of the square are hidden under other squares. And the other box down here labeled Auto Select Layer will make the layer of the items I hover my mouse over the active layer if I click on it. Right now in the Layers panel, I can see that the layer with the red square is the active layer because it's highlighted in blue. If I want the magenta square layer to be active instead, I just move my cursor over it and watch the Layers panel when I click on the magenta square. Now it's highlighted in blue in the Layers panel, indicating that it's the active layer. So Auto Select Layer means that the layer of the item I click on will become the active layer. I'm going to click on the red square to make it active again. If you're using a version of Elements earlier than version 11, you'll find those three options in the Options bar for the Move tool. The Options bar is located at the top of the Photoshop Elements window in those older versions. Now that the layer for the red square is active, I can just click and drag it to the upper left corner until it snaps to those guides we put there, and then let go of the mouse. And now I'll click and drag the blue square to the lower left corner until it snaps to those guides. And I'll do the same with the cyan and yellow squares. I want to line up the green square along the left edge between the red and blue squares, but I want it to be centered perfectly between them. I can use the rulers and guides to help me do that. Now I know that each square is 2 inches high for a total of 6 for the 3 squares, and I know that I have a half inch space at the top and a half inch at the bottom of my document before the squares start, so that's another inch. So that equals 7 inches, and since my document is 8 inches tall, if I subtract the 7 from the 8, I'm left with one total inch of space that I can use to divide on both sides of that green square. Obviously I need a half inch on both sides. To measure that out, I'm going to move my zero point by clicking and dragging from the upper left corner where the two rulers meet down. And I'm not going to worry about the vertical zero point, but I just want to make sure I get a zero point on the bottom of my red square. So I'll put it there and let go. Now I can place a guide from the top ruler at the half inch mark on the left hand ruler. So I'll go up here and grab, grab a guide out. If I watch over on the left ruler, when I get to the half inch mark, I'll let go. And now I have a guide a half inch away from the bottom of the red square. Now all I have to do is click and drag the green square until it snaps to those two guides. And I can use the guides that are already there to snap the magenta square into place. I'll hide the guides by pressing Command semicolon on a Mac or it would be control semicolon on a PC. And now you can see how we were able to line up the six squares nice and neat by using the rulers and guides inside of Photoshop Elements. If you want to work in some other unit of measurement besides inches, you can easily do that. Right click on either of the two rulers, I'll do that to the top ruler, a list of choices pops up. You can see there's a check mark next to inches indicating that that is the current choice. If I want to use centimeters instead, I can just click on it from here and it instantly changes to centimeters. So I hope you now have a clear idea of how you can use rulers and guides in Photoshop Elements to not only line up items, but also how you can measure items and distances. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.